Good morning. Well, we're almost here. We're here. Welcome to Harvest Christian Center this Sunday morning. Looks like we're preparing for a wedding. I know we've been getting some stuff together at the house for this and flowers. And, and thank the Lord they made it in here. You know, there's another uh, blessed day we're looking for, isn't it? The coming of the Lord Jesus. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom. There used to be an old song, or there is an old song we sing, and it's, We Shall See the King. It says, there's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, night, or noon. The wedding of the bride. United with the groom, we shall see the king when he comes. Do you want to see the king today? I do too. I look forward to the coming of Jesus. Let this be a day of preparation in your heart for the coming of the Lord. If he should come or if he should call for you today. It's a glorious time. And it's a blessed hope. I don't know what the preacher's going to preach on, but that's a good one to preach on any time. Lord, I want to be ready. I want to worship you. We just had a good time of prayer. Some did last night around here. Just, just worshiping the Lord in anticipation for this day. And it is a good, good day. It's a day to give thanks to the Lord. The Lord loves His people. The Lord loves His church. The Lord loves you and me. And I'm so glad. God's not dead. He's really alive. He's really alive. Hallelujah. We just stand together and thank Him today before they sing this song. Before we sing. Lord, we praise Your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless Your name. We lift up the King of Kings. Oh, holy, holy, holy. Lord, God Almighty. Oh, Lord, we praise you. We turn our hearts to you today. We bless your name. We lift our voices in praise today. You're not dead. You're truly alive. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, let us be ready. Yeah. Oh, Lord, if you should come even today, even this morning, oh, yes. are we getting ready for, for a wedding? Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, who loves us who loves us, and Christ in us. Thank you for every man who's here today, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Let our hearts look in anticipation to you today. We want to worship you this morning while we have bread. Thank you, Jesus. Would everybody say thank you, Jesus? Amen. Let's worship him. Yeah, it's going, 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 yeah
You are 
remember the table of our Lord, God, we pray, Holy Spirit, you continue to move among us. God, as we come to this time of remembering, God, that you would speak to our hearts by the power of your word and by the power of your spirit. In the glorious name of Jesus, we declare you are great. Great are you, Lord. In the attitude and atmosphere of worship, please, you can be seated. I'm going to move to our time of the remembrance of the Lord's table and take communion together. So glad that you are here with us in service. We'll give you an official welcome in just a few moments. But as we get ready to receive the elements of communion today, we extend the invitation for all of you who name the name of Jesus. You've received Him as your Savior and as your Lord to receive communion with us. That's the only requirement. You don't have to be a member here. In fact, if you're a first-time guest, as long as you have given your life to Christ, we invite you to come and partake with us today. The brethren are going to be serving you in just a moment. If you fellows would go ahead and come and as they do, I will also remind you that we're admonished in Scripture to take this time as we're waiting on everyone to be served. And by the way, we take the time and the brethren serve everyone in the church, even ones that may not be in the auditorium with us. So as we're waiting for everyone to be served, the Bible tells us to Examine ourselves. And I can tell you that if you examine you, you're not going to get the full picture. So I encourage you to ask the Spirit of God to examine you. Give Him permission, if you will, to look into your life and speak to you and reveal anything that you may need to settle before you take the elements of communion. If you're not a child of God yet and you've not received Jesus Christ, you can do that right now. You can do that before we take these elements. Just simply tell Him that you receive what He's done for you on the cross. Ask Him to forgive you. Confess your sins. Name Him as the Son of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus came and lived and died for you. That's what we're remembering today. The sacrifice that was made for each of us. So continue in an attitude of worship. Maybe close your eyes and get rid of any distractions and spend some time just talking to the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Given to 
take pain and punishment that is due us. God, there's no way we could have ever made that payment taking that punishment. The brutality that Jesus suffered on his way in his trial and on his way to the cross and while on the cross. But in that body there is victory. In that body there is healing. In that body is atonement. Atonement for my sin. And as we're instructed by Paul later in the New Testament, we do it in remembrance of Christ. So we thank you for the body of your beloved Son and our precious Savior and what was accomplished for us in and through that body. In his name we give you thanks. The passage in Matthew then goes on to say, Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's take the cup together. Father, for the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins, blood of Jesus that was the necessary payment for the atoning death of Christ on the cross where through the thorns in his brow and the nails in his hands and feet and the spear in his side and the stripes upon his back God the shed blood of Christ is what brings us forgiveness today we remember Lord the awesome price you paid as our heavenly father to send your only son sacrifice that even though there were moments Lord where even you asked the Father if there was another way yet your phrase nevertheless not my will but your will be done you willingly went through that agony that pain the shedding of your blood knowing it was necessary that we today in 2016 and have the assurance that our sins are forgiven. Our name is written in the book. We have a life and a destiny, destiny through the body and the blood of Jesus for which we give you thanks. Holy Spirit, as you have spoken to us and dealt with us in these moments, just in these few moments as we come to the table of remembrance, let every day be a day that we realize who we are in Christ. And it's only because of Him his death on the cross that our sins are blotted out and we have a hope and a future today. In verse 30 of that same passage of scripture it says, and when they had sung they went out to the Mount of Olives. We've lifted our voices, we've lifted our hearts, we've lifted our spirit. And we say thank you Thank you, God, for all that you have done for us. Included in Jesus' death on the cross, the beatings that he took in the body, healing is provided for us. He's overcome death, hell, and the grave, and he also provides healing, strength. Pastor John is coming now in this atmosphere of worship and remembrance lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Your glory is above the heavens. Lord, as I consider the heavens and your handiwork, the moon and the stars, what is man that you're mindful of? 
but we're so small and so frail in your sight. But Lord, you extended your hand. Lord, you saw us in need and confused and trapped in sin and you put on the crown of thorns and went to the cross. You took on our sins and you exchanged it for and gave us your righteousness. We give you honor and praise today. We thank you for inviting us to your table in your presence. For what we know in your presence, every problem will have to be. In your presence, depression will have to flee. In your presence, wounds will heal. Joy restored, peace restored. But in your presence, addiction will cease. Addiction to pornography. Addiction to drugs will cease. Lord, we claim today your victory. We serve a victorious king. And we claim your victory this morning. Victory in our hearts, victory in our minds. Lord, as we proclaim your victory, Lord, I pray that somebody will release unforgiveness toward a loved ones, release bitterness, that resentment they've been holding on to. They will release it and claim their victory this morning. Lord, I pray that in your presence, ears will be open to hear your word and to receive your word. Lord, I pray today someone's ears will be open for the very first time to your gospel, that they will receive your gospel with gladness and with joy, and that you would change their life. I proclaim we don't want to leave here the same in Jesus' name. We want to leave here renewed, refreshed, and revived. Lord, as this church pray for revival, let us come together and humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways and then you will hear from heaven and heal this land. And Lord, we actually let it start here at Harvest in the Cantonment area. Spread to Pensacola area, to the Gulf Coast, to, to the United States that we will be one nation under God. In the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you, Lord. Your name alone is holy. And Lord, we pray those that dealt with sickness in this congregation will receive their healing as they receive their elements today. Receive their breakthrough. Receive their word they've been waiting on. As they receive their elements today. Give them a revelation of yourself and what you've done for them. That they may worship you with all their heart in the beauty of holiness. We thank you. We thank you for being able to come to the throne of grace. We give you praise on In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. Amen. Bless you. Grandma. Our uh, ushers make their way forward at this time. I'm going to ask at this time if we have any first time guests. And I'm not going to ask you to say anything. I just want to recognize our first time guests. If you're a first time guest, I'm going to get you to raise your hand and keep it high. We got some guests over here, we got some guests there. Let's give our guests a hand clap of praise. Thank God for you being in the house today. We want to ask our guests to please fill out a connection card. We want a record of your visit. And on the back, you have a place you can put comments and prayer requests. We do pray over our prayer requests. And if you want someone to call you personally and pray with you, we will do that with these prayer requests is prayed over none less than three times a week. And
Take this connection card at the end of the service. We'll have an information table in the foyer. Take it there. We have a special gift for you uh, when you drop it off. Amen. We're going to continue in worship. We want to continue to worship the Lord through our giving, of our tithe and offering. We have our ushers make ready to receive our tithe and offering. Scripture is taken from Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. And it states, Honor the Lord with your possessions, and with the first fruit of all your increase, so your barns will be full with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. It talks about honoring the Lord, recognizing that He's the provider. The Bible says that promotion don't come from the east or the west, but it comes from above. And as we give, we honor the Lord, recognizing that He's the one that's provided for us. And as we give, we, we give with honor and respect and reverence. A short, say a short prayer, we're going to take up our tithe and offering. Father, we just thank you this opportunity to give. The opportunity to show our gratitude and say thank you for providing for us. Lord, as we give today, Lord, let's give with reverence and honor and uh, with gladness. Not only our monetary gifts, but Lord, let's give our praise and worship the great things that you've done in our life that money can't even buy. And we bless you. We love you. We appreciate you. But those that decide to give today and don't have, Lord, bless them in their jobs. Give them supernatural favor over their household. And they will have something to give on the next time. And they give you glory and honor. And Lord, I ask you to bless these gifts like you did the fishing of those and multiply them. All your people in need will be, needs will be met and will be fed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. After you've given and the offering baskets pass you by, I'm going to send one more praise song. I want you to give God your all. Give him the sacrifice of praise today as the praise team come back.
Harvesters is a ministry for ages 50 and over, or if you feel 50, or if you want to just come and hang out. Uh, we invite you to come with us. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to be going somewhere to a restaurant for lunch, so we need to know if you're coming so we can reserve enough space. So, Miss Jackie Free, will you wave your hand for everybody? Look back there, Miss Jackie. If you haven't told her yet if you're going, please do that today so we can make all those arrangements and make all of those plans. So pick up a bulletin. There's more information in there. I just wanted to highlight some things that are happening this week to make sure that everyone is together on it. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, let's turn to Luke chapter number 4. Luke chapter number 4. Um, how many of you like surprises? Sometimes. How many of you really don't like surprises? Yeah, there's a few. That's okay. I understand that. Um, when Tammy and I were dating, uh, I, I love to surprise. I love to do those kind of things. And, and Tammy and I were dating, and I, she didn't know I was coming, and I surprised her by showing up unannounced. Now, other people in the family knew I was coming. It was just her that didn't know. And I learned early on that that kind of surprise can backfire on me. <laughs> if you're not careful. Because actually... It surprised, startled, shocked, all of those things. And the desired effect that I was hoping for came later, but the initial desired effect was not there. So sometimes surprises cannot be all that we desire them to be. Now, uh, we've gotten much better with our surprises, and there's some things that you surprise with and things that you don't. How many of you like to be amazed by something? Yeah. A surprise and amaze sometimes can go together. You can just be amazed by what has happened, be surprised at its outcome and surprised by things that happen. So this morning for just a few moments, uh, I'm, I'm praying that, that Tyran and John A can keep their mind on the message today. I know they got a big life event coming up. But just for a few moments today, I want to talk to us about being surprised, being amazed by Jesus. When you're in your salvation experience, and I'm not going to ask anybody to testify, but maybe you were just amazed at what God did in your life. Yeah. You know, the still probably the most popular church song there is is Amazing Grace. It's been sung many different ways, many different times. I preached the whole message just on the words of Amazing Grace and what they what they mean. But we're amazed by God and His love for us. And when we come to the table of the Lord like we did today, we observe the elements of communion. It continues to amaze me all that Christ has done in our life. There's a song by Philip Craig and Dean, and, and don't, don't worry, don't fret, I'm not going to sing anything. I'm going to recite some lyrics to you. But it says, your grace still amazes me. It says, my faithful father, enduring friend, your tender mercy is like a river with no end. It overwhelms me and covers my sin. Each time I come into your presence, I stand in wonder once again. Your grace still amazes me. Your love is still a mystery. Each day I fall on my knees because your grace still amazes me. Oh, patient Savior, you make me whole. You are the author and healer of my soul. What can I give you, Lord? What can I say? I know there's no way to repay you, only to offer my praise, because your grace still amazes me. Your love is still a mystery. Each day I fall on my knees, because your grace still amazes me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that in our time together, as we talk about Jesus and your ability to amaze and surprise and astonish because of who you are. God, sometimes we get so familiar in our relationship with you that we lose our amazement, we lose our astonishment, we, we lose the surprise. But God, today, as we look into your word at some instances where you did those things in people's lives, not just the lives of your followers, but in the lives of those who did not yet know you. God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you speak to us today through your word. Use your servant as an instrument to effect change in our life as this word is delivered. 
that will bring you honor and glory in all that we do. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter number 4, and I'm going to read from the Message Bible in this particular passage of Scripture today. But in Luke 4, verses 31 and 32, it says this, And Jesus went down to Capernaum, a village in Galilee, and He was teaching the people on the Sabbath. And they were surprised and impressed by His teaching. His teaching was so forthright, so confident, so authoritative, not the quibbling and quoting that they were used to. Jesus surprised the people with the authority of his word. They were astonished because they were used to just hearing religious quarreling and religious quibbling and, 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 and ceremonial quotation of things, but Jesus spoke with authority and in their life they were surprised by that. That there really is power in this relationship with Christ. He was introducing something new to them that they were not expecting, that they had no reference for. And I'm going to tell you, when Jesus shows up in our life, he does the same thing for us. And we as people of God and as a church and as a place called Harvest Christian Center need to live lives in such a way that when people come into this house and they experience Christ, they're not so surprised and amazed because they see it in our lives every day. Amen? But when Jesus initially showed up and began to teach them and began to speak with such authority, they were surprised, they were amazed, they were astonished. Life is full of surprises for us. And I love it when Jesus steps into the middle of our life and surprises us and amazes us and astonishes us. But here's the truth of the matter. If we are truly faith, we should not be shocked when Jesus shows up. Amen. Now, I know sometimes and I know it's semantics and the normal uh, nomenclature of the culture that we live in. But we pray and ask God to do something. And when he does, sometimes we hear this phrase, I can't believe he did that. I don't know if that speaks to our astonishment or our lack of faith. But either way, we should not be shocked. But Jesus continues to amaze. He continues to surprise. He continues to astonish us. Jesus himself surprised people all the time, not just in this instance. In fact, later on in verse chapter 4, we're going to see some other things. But Jesus surprised his disciples when he showed compassion to the children. In the story of the children that wanted to come to Jesus... They wanted to keep the children away, but Jesus said, no, let the children come to me. And the disciples were amazed and surprised and shocked that Jesus would want to be bothered by the children. When in reality, Jesus' heart is for all of us as his children. He surprised worshipers when driving out the money changers in the temple. How would you like to have been there that day when Jesus showed up on the scene and they had a certain expectation of what Jesus was going to do, but he saw how his house was being used, how the temple of God was being used, and they were surprised when he got angry yet did not sin. How many of you know you can do that? Few of you. The rest of you are saying, most of the time when I get angry, I probably do sin. But you can because Jesus lived a sinless life, right? He lived a life without sin. But he did get angry and he drove the money changers out and it surprised them at his reaction. Just when you think you have Jesus figured out in, his, in your life, he is going to, going to surprise you. He's going to amaze you. He's going to astonish you. He surprised them by healing the sick. He surprised sinners by forgiving them and setting them free from our sin, from from their sin and from our sin. Surprised me that Jesus would love me enough that he would die on the cross for me to forgive me of my sin. And that I hadn't sinned so much that I couldn't be forgiven. See, that's one of the greatest lies the devil tells people is that you've done too much for too long, too many people, in too many ways, there's no hope for you. I want you to be surprised today to hear again how much Jesus loves you. He loves you. Let him amaze you with his grace. Let him astonish you with his forgiveness that he pours out for us. Listen, he didn't go to the cross for nothing. He went to the cross for you, for your life. He continued to surprise and amaze people. They were shocked and astonished at what Jesus would do. 
And I know there's some of you praying for healing in here today. Don't be surprised and shocked when he touches you and heals you and strengthens you. Be grateful. Be, be ready with praise for what God is doing in your life. Now here is where we desire to see Jesus surprise and shock people. And that's with what he does in the world. And how he deals with those that are not his. Surprise that people will love you. There, there are people in our families, people in our realms of influence that feel like that they are totally unlovable. And then they find out just how much Jesus loves them. And it may be through their relationship with you that they find that out. And they are amazed. They are shocked. They are surprised by the love of Christ. In scripture, we have other references of where Jesus did amazing things in Luke's chapter Chapters 4 and 5, we see how Jesus surprised people there. In chapter 4, verses 33 through 36, it says this, Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of, un, of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you? And Jesus of Nazareth, did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in the midst in their midst it came out of him and did not hurt him then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves saying what a word this is for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits and they come out be amazed by God's power to defeat evil in your life. Be amazed for God to be able to break habits and addictions in your life. Be amazed that he has the power and the authority to settle all of those things in your life. They had just been watching this man that had been demon possessed for so long. They had been watching him felt helpless of what to do. Can I tell you, if you're a child of God and the spirit of God dwells in you, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you and you can speak to those things and people can be amazed at the power of God not not because of you but because of him that flows through your life amen people get amazed today because of how God uses his people I would love it if Jesus would just appear on the scene where we could see him but you know how Jesus appears on the scene in us we have to be ready. We have to be willing to be used by God so he can continue to amaze people. And I got to tell you, when God uses you among your friends and family, they'll be amazed because <laughs> they knew you when, right? My family's constantly amazed because they knew me when. But God uses our lives to amaze people and use his power. Powerless religion unfortunately, is the reputation that the church has in the world today. And I'm talking about the church in general. They were amazed because they had never seen power demonstrated before. And can I tell you folks, the day is long past that people walk into a church, especially a church like Harvest Christian Center, and not experience the power of God. We have to let God use us to demonstrate His power so people are not shocked when it happens. Hallelujah. Oh, the world will be amazed. The world will be shocked. But we need to let God use us in such a way that Jesus can still surprise and astonish people by what He is able to do through the life of a believer that loves Him. Surprised by the power of His Word, He spoke and the demons Listen, can I tell you that same power resides in you, in the person of the Holy Spirit? It resides in you. We just have this fear of using it. And we need to move beyond that fear and walk in that power because we are His representatives in the earth. We are His representatives that are still going to shock and amaze and surprise people by God's power. Then there's the story of the calling of the disciples in Luke chapter number 5 where he was calling four of the disciples and in Luke 5 verses 4 through 10 the Bible says this, When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon Peter, Launch out into the deep and let your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. 
So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. In this story of Jesus calling his disciples, here is Peter. Peter represents all of us. When Jesus tells us to do something, Peter represents all of us. It says, Well, Lord, I fished all night. I've been in that spot all night. And, and those of you who fish, you know what it's like to fish in the spot for a long time and not catch anything. These guys have been out there all night. Now, number one, you would have thought they would have caught something, but they had caught nothing. So they had a point of reference that says, there's no way there's fish anywhere around here. And Jesus said, hey, drop your net down one more time. And Peter says, well, Lord, we fished all night. We ain't caught a thing. That's us. God tells us to do something. Jesus prompts us to do something through the working of his Holy Spirit. And we look at him and say, hey, we've tried that. We've done that. We've been there. That's not going to work. Other people have tried that. That's not going to work. And Jesus says, hush up. I cleaned that up for Jesus because we would have said something else. But Jesus says, hush up and just do. Just, just do it. And when we do, the catch was so big that Peter and, and his mates on the boat were not able to contain it. So they called another boat over there and they put the fish on. How many fishermen would like to have two boats almost sinking full of fish? Now, I see some really proud hands back there. Let's, let's go get it. They were astonished and amazed because Jesus, regardless of how many times he's shown up in your life, still has the ability to astonish you by going above and beyond. Hallelujah. I just caught a glimpse of Jody sitting in her seat and I, it made me think of how God went above and beyond in their situation with their home. Amen? Now, when, when, when's it going to sell? Oh, how about 48 hours after you put it on the market? That's like getting two boatloads of fish. Amen? That's just like God just showing up and showing off and surprising us and amazing us and astonishing us with what He does in our life. Never lose Side of your faith that will allow God to show up and do amazing things. He just looks at Peter and says, how's the fishing? Peter says, well, pretty much hadn't caught anything. And Jesus said, well, won't you try one more time? How many of you know you're tired if you fished all night? And in our life, we get tired of trying. We get tired of doing. We get tired. Sometimes we even get tired of believing, don't we? Come on, let's be honest with each other. And Jesus says, if you'll just believe one more time. How many of you know that one more time is all it takes? One more time is all it takes. And they caught more fish than they can handle. Then in the uh, story of the paralytic man being lowered in to be healed, the crowd was so big they couldn't get, so they had to lower him in to be healed. We picked that up in Luke chapter number 5, verse number 20, and it says this, When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Now, there's always going to be people that don't like the way Jesus does things. Amen? Look what the scribes say right here. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Blasphemies. Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk? but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house glorifying God. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. How many of you are ready to see some strange things again? Amen. How many of you are ready to see God do some strange things again? In his kingdom, in his house, in his people, Jesus had the power to forgive sin and to heal sickness. He says, okay, you don't like the way I said it? Just so you know that I have this power and this authority, I'll say it in the way you want me to say it. And can I tell you, they wouldn't have been happy with that either. 
They probably complained about that, but those that were around were amazed. They were surprised. They were astonished by what Christ had done. He saw faith and he forgave. He saw faith and he healed. He challenged the prevailing thought of the day, but he has the supreme power and the authority. He said, I'll show you. I'll say it whatever way needs to be said to satisfy you, but it's the same power that heals, that is the same power that forgives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many God has ever touched your life and healed you? Isn't that an amazing experience? To be touched by God, whether it's a miraculous instantaneous healing or He heals you over time, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from Him and we know that God touches you. I can tell you this morning, today, I have experienced that very thing. Had something going on in my body that was literally about to drive me crazy. And I'm going to tell you something. My wife stopped all that she was doing. She went and got some oil. I don't even know what kind of oil it was. Doesn't matter. It's not the kind of oil. It's the point of contact that we find it in. And she anointed my head and prayed. And it wasn't no five minute, ten minute prayer. She prayed. She asked God to touch me and heal me. And I, can I tell you today? I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. When I got up this morning, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get up here. And, and preach today. I was already thinking about, oh, I need to call Pastor Fred or Pastor John. I said, I can't call Pastor John. His daughter's getting married today. I can't put that on. I was going through all these scenarios, but you know what? God touched me. And right now I don't feel a single thing and haven't since about five minutes after she prayed for me. Yeah. Hallelujah. It is the power of God. It's not, it's not the power of Tammy. It is the power of faith and then God shows up. And I got to tell you what, I was a little astonished by it. How many of you ever had a pain that when it lifts, when God lifts it, you're, you feel so good that you're just shocked and amazed and astonished by the touch of God on your life? Hallelujah. God has that supreme authority. Jesus has that supreme authority to forgive and to heal. And we should quit being so surprised, but yet God still surprises us because we're human we're flesh. Sometimes we forget that he's done it before. Amen. Sometimes we forget that every promise in his book is yea and amen and he cannot go back on it. And so sometimes we still get surprised. We still get amazed. We still get astonished by Jesus and his love for us. He continued to surprise people throughout his life and even in his death. He surprised and amazed people. Even in his death, he surprised and amazed people. His disciples, he surprised them by dying on the cross. He had tried to explain it to them. He had tried to tell them. He, he told them that, that he was going to die and the, the temple would be rebuilt in three days. And he did everything he could to explain to them. But when the day came for him to die on the cross, his disciples were surprised that he was allowing himself to do that. That the very son of God could be controlled by man. And we know the truth of the matter is no man ever controlled Jesus. In song we have declared and sang before that he could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and for me. Surprised his very disciples. He surprised the murderers and the thieves on the cross and those criminals that God forgave. He, he, he surprised them. They were shocked and amazed just as we were when Jesus, Jesus surprised us by saving us. But my favorite surprise is the surprise he gave the enemy <laughs> when he got up out of the grave. Oh, don't you know that Satan was astonished? He was amazed and he was surprised. He thought he had won the ultimate victory. He thought the one thing that stood between him and expanding his kingdom beyond his wildest dreams had been taken care of on that cross. But Jesus surprised the devil and he got up out of that grave and he's still surprising people today. He's still amazing people today. He will surprise many with his return. And here's what I want to say to you today as I get ready to close about being surprised by Jesus. There's one surprise you don't want to receive from Jesus. 
You don't want to be surprised by his return. You don't want to be surprised. You don't want to be taken off guard. Now, we don't know when it's going to happen, but he said we're supposed to look for him and we are supposed to be ready. Amen? That's a surprise that you don't want. You don't want any of your family to experience. You don't want your friends. You don't even want your enemies. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't want your enemies to be surprised by that day. Oh, I know what the scripture says. He's going to come as a thief in the night and we're not, we don't know the hour and the day and there's no point in trying to predict it. And we all feel like we're living in the end times because of what's going on in our country and around the world. And, and we could very well be, but the reality is the, the way that we look for his return is by being ready. Because it won't matter when he comes if you're ready, but it will matter when he comes if you're not. How do I get ready, Pastor? Receive Christ as your Savior. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that God sent Him to live a sinless life, to die a vicarious death for you and me on the cross, and then to raise again on the third day and sit in heaven today calling each one of His children by name before His Father. That's what you do to be ready. And to maintain your state of readiness, you follow after Him, you obey Him, you seek Him, and you serve Him. And you stay in a state of readiness. We often compare the Christian life to the military life, and we do that in this church because we got a lot of military people in here. People that have either served or are serving. And we know that when we get trained and we get ready to do what we need to do, we go do that and then we come back. And guess what? Just like in the military, so it is in the Christian walk, we get trained some more. The training never ceases. And the way we stay ready is by serving Him and learning of Him and seeking Him and pursuing Him. And then we're sure that we're ready. Doubt comes in our readiness, when we've had a life in Christ and we begin to walk away from Him. We begin to forget instead of remember. We begin to forget. But can I challenge you today, don't be surprised on the day of His return. Be anticipating it so when the day comes, you're ready. And it's the most joyous day ever. Because here's the reality. Life is eternal. Now we know what the scripture tells us that it's appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. So unless Jesus comes back before that moment, we are all going to experience a physical death. But there is an eternal life that awaits all of us. All of us. Even those who don't follow Christ. Because they are not going to die. If you don't accept Christ and He returns, there will be no time once He has returned. And at that moment, you're either going to live forever in heaven with Him or you're going to live forever in torment in hell. There's no dying in hell. It's perpetual torment don't be surprised by his coming the world and even the church has gotten complacent in the fact that Jesus is this wonderful person who loves us who gave himself for us but we have lost sight of the fact that we are talking about eternity when we talk about a relationship with Christ don't be surprised when the trumpet sounds be astonished be amazed But don't be surprised. Be ready because the ones that are going to be surprised, you and I, won't. if he comes before we die, we won't have time to be surprised. How many of you have seen those end times movies when when there's clothes folded up on the airplane seat or in in the chair? You know who's going to be surprised at that moment? The people who see those clothes. They're the ones who are going to be surprised. They're the ones who are going to be wondering what's going on. You and I, Won't be here to be surprised. But here's our mandate from Jesus. When He gave them the supper, 
he said at the end in verse 30 that they sang a hymn and went out. As children of God, we got to go out. And we got to compel them to come in. We got to share the message of hope. Share the message of love. Share the message of forgiveness that will surprise and astonish and amaze people. But it will prevent surprise on that day. Because we'll be ready and they will be too. Would you bow your heads with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not going to be surprised that Jesus is coming because he's told us over and over again that he's coming. But today in these last few moments of this service, I want to give opportunity if there's anyone here that is not sure of what will happen should Jesus return. Not sure if they are ready. If you're not, if you're not sure, you can be sure today. You can make a decision that begins a journey that will assure you of what will happen on that day. So you will not be surprised. So with heads bowed and eyes closed for just a moment, if you're here today and you'd say, Pastor, I've never asked Christ into my life. You may know a lot about Him. You may even have attended church. You may be a regular church goer. But you've never taken the step to ask Christ into your life. I want to talk to you first. If there's anyone here today that is in that category and you want to be sure before you walk out of here today, I'm not going to try to scare you to death of what might happen, what could happen. I want to give you assurance. And I can't even give that to you. That comes through your relationship with Jesus and it starts by receiving what He did for you on the cross. So if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've never received Christ as my Savior. I want to do that today. I want to be sure. Slip your hand up right where you are. We'll include you in the prayer at the close of the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might be here today and you'd say, Pastor, I've had a relationship with Christ, but I've wandered far away from Him and I'm not sure what would happen to me. First of all, I want you to know that the assurance of your salvation comes with peace. And if you need that peace today, that everything is right between you and Him and you want to settle that, and maybe you've drifted away and maybe you're heading in the wrong direction away from Him instead of toward Him and you'd say, Pastor, pray for me today. I want to recommit my life to Christ. I want to settle this doubt that I have. If that's you, just slip your hand up right where you are. God bless you. 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 Listen, Jesus wants you to be sure today. He wants you to be sure. Hallelujah. If you raised your hand today, I'm going to ask the prayer team to come. A few of you, if you will. Some of you stand on each side of the steps. We're set up a little different today. And this is what I want to challenge you with. I'm going to ask those that raise their hand or maybe those in addition that didn't raise their hand but feel like you should have and you want to settle things right now. I want you without hesitation, not even looking around, worrying about this is your eternal destination that you're settling today. If you slip your hand up, I want you to move out from where you are right now and come and stand with one of these. And if you didn't raise your hand, but you feel like you need to, come right now. If you're a lady, try to find a lady or a couple to pray with. If you're a man, try to find a man to pray with. But come right now. Anyone else, while the Spirit of God is moving, you can settle it today. Don't let the enemy of your soul say, well, what will they think? Well, People think I got it all together. They're going to, listen, the only one who needs to know whether you have it all together or not is Jesus, and He already knows you don't. None of us do. So I'm going to wait just another moment, then I'm going to pray a prayer over all these that have come today. I'm going to wait for you, though. God's waiting for you. If you need to settle it, make it right today. Let's do it today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God bless you, son. God bless you, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the Spirit of God is still moving, so I'm just going to wait another minute. I'm not going to draw it out, but I'm going to wait another minute. Make it right today. Settle it today. Don't be surprised at His coming, but be looking forward to His coming. Hallelujah. As these are praying up here, would everyone just stretch your hands up this way? If you're a believer, you've received Christ, stretch your hands up this way. And join me in prayer over these that have come. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you thanks for the power of your word today that speaks to our heart and speaks to our lives and brings us back to that place that we remember all that you've done for us. God, we're constantly amazed by your grace. And Father, for these that have come today, that have had a walk with you but are drifting away and they wanna be sure today. God, I pray that the assurance of your word, the assurance of heaven, the guarantee of the Holy Spirit would become alive inside of them today. That as they repent and turn back toward you, turn away from where they're headed and turn back toward you, that God, you would do a miraculous work inside of them and give them peace in knowing and the assurance of knowing that they are a child of God and let their anticipation or let their, let their doubt turn to anticipation of what you desire to do in and through them. To anticipate and look forward to your return and to be ready. Oh God, continue to amaze us and astonish us with what you do in our life. Continue to show up in big ways and in small ways and we'll give you all the glory for it. And for these that have recommitted their lives today, we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. Holy Spirit, seal what you are doing this very moment, this very hour in their lives. And God, we're so thankful today that in our lives one day Jesus surprised us, forgave us of our sin, astonished us with his amazing grace. And God, today that grace still amazes me still astonishes me. God, we submit this service, these words into your hands. Holy Spirit, seal what you have spoken into our lives today. Give us a sense of urgency about the world in which we live and those that we love that we want to see come to Christ. And give us a sense, a sense of expectancy of your return and the glory that awaits us all. Now, God, as we get ready to unite a young man and a young woman together in marriage, God, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will be with us. And then as we depart afterwards, Lord, that we would go with this message of love, hope, and forgiveness into a world that is lost, dying, and hurting. We will be instruments in your hands of amazement, of astonishment, of surprise when they experience the love of Jesus and the forgiveness of Christ through our lives touching theirs. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord today? Can you give him some praise for these that have recommitted their life to Christ on this first Sunday in June? Hallelujah.